What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you the team builder for the first round of playoffs of CPC Season 6 up against Mio and his OKC Thunderous. And before I get into the team, just a reminder that if you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, helps out a ton. And let's do more cool stuff for you guys. And if you have not done so already, please feel free to check out the TTM Discord. That will be linked in the description where we have channels for all different facets of Pokemon. Well, except for VGC, but we are we're working on that, keeping that on the low key. But we are working on that uh, for some time in the hopefully near future. But we will see. But anyway, on to the team. Like I said, we are up against Mio and his OKC Thunderous, and he has a team of Mega Lopunny, Victini, Mandibuzz, Nido King, Primarina, Magnezone, Dragonite, Seismitoad, Lycanroc, Day, Miss Magius, and Obama Snow, with Dragonite and Miss Magius being his Z users. And yeah, first thing I'm noticing looking at his team is that this matchup is probably the trickiest one that I've faced all season. I mean, like, definitely we face some teams that are more well-rounded. I mean, I feel like we've definitely faced some teams that are, that are objectively, well, not objectively, that are, like, if you look at, like, the, I don't know, just in terms of, like, a checklist for building a team. Like, if you went by the drafting with the elite standards of team building, we faced other teams that are better in that sense. But in terms of matchup, I think this one, this one is pretty probably the trickiest that we faced all season long and so yeah this is going to be this is going to be relatively tough to say the least because I mean Megalop is annoying to where you have to have a dedicated answer to it you can't just really check it because with dual priority with a uh, dual stab that is just spammable against your against everything then you're really just kind of in a tough spot in that regard and then looking at the rest of his mons, I mean, you have like Victini, which has a ton of coverage. I mean, Victini's coverage is absolutely insane. Mandibuzz, which is a very annoying mon for me, even though I do have Tapu Koko and Raichu. I mean, the rest of my team absolutely hates Mandibuzz. Uh, and then Nidoking, just don't really have a switch into that. Primarina, very, very tough for me to switch into. And then even his last pick, Obama Snow, has a very good matchup against me. So it's just kind of like a, really, every single Mon is something that, every single Mon is, uh, has the potential to be brought and has a decent enough matchup against me to where if he brought it, it would be a problem. There's not a single Mon that I would say if he brought it, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have some level of, of concern so it's just that's that's the type of tricky matchup that it is and then with my team looking at his team I am noticing that there are a couple things that really have good matchups first and foremost I'm noticing that Alolan Raichu can absolutely go in against him with the right set I mean just straight up Alolan Raichu will dunk on him if I weaken the appropriate stuff and bring the correct set, so I'm looking at that. Mega Pidgeot is very, very spammable against him. I mean, just look at his team. Hurricane plus HP Ground just goes in. Like, it destroys something. It doesn't really have any switch-ins at all. Spideff Mandibuzz is as good as it gets, and at that point, I can potentially take advantage of that thing. Well, first of all, it has to be Spideff to take on Mega Pidge, which allows Buzzwool to be a problem. And then second of all, I do have two electric types that you can see that I'm bringing that can pressure that thing as well. So you might be thinking, well, why isn't Mega Pidge on this team? Well, even though it has an amazing matchup in terms of spamming Hurricane and HP Ground, unfortunately, it is revenged like absolute crazy, like Magnezone with an Assault Vest can outspeed well I guess the set that I had at first was modest just to be able to hit hard enough to where Mega Pidgeot could be warranted in this matchup but things like Scarf Magnezone, Scarf Obama Snow outspeed Magnezone with Assault Vest doesn't even go down to Hurricane plus HP Ground uh, he has priority out the wazoo with Mega Lop, Dragonite and then super effective uh priority with Lycanroc and Obama Snow. So basically Mega Pidgeot, while it looked good, just did not have, it was too easily revenged. It didn't do enough to where I could warrant bringing it. So that's why Mega Pidgeot is not on this set. And then as for the rest of my team, it's just kind of like, okay, um, Raichu, I'm going to build my game plan around sweeping with Raichu. 
let's just build the team as uh, best as possible to support that and yeah so without further ado let's jump on into the team the first mod i'm bringing is tapu coco because like i said i am building this team around supporting a raichu sweep at the end and raichu does not sweep nearly as well if it doesn't have that double speed so yeah tapu coco is also very good at maintaining momentum throughout this whole game with volt switch dazzling gleam u-turn and hp ground covers his team relatively nicely chips away at things like Magnezone and Needle King as well as Seismitoad because uh, Magnezone and uh, Seismitoad are two things that need to be chipped very very heavily for Raichu to be able to sweep. In fact with this Raichu set that I'm bringing Magnezone just straight up needs to be gone. So just by maintaining momentum forcing those things out and then with the hazard stack that I am bringing spoilers with Ferrothorn and Swampert then U-turn plus hazards should be able to chip those mons very very quickly and put them in range where Raichu is able to clean up late in game if I do get all of the sufficient damage off. Volt Switch and U-Turn just dual momentum for really whatever he brings and I mean he's probably going to bring at least one ground if not two in fact he would be I would be very very shocked if he did not bring at least one ground but if I'm able to get rid of that then Volt Switch is much more spammable and much more preferable to be spammed. So, I mean, having Electric Stab on Tapu Koko is always nice. I just figured that the momentum obtained from Volt Switch would be a little bit more beneficial than having uh, Thunderbolt, just because, I mean, again, momentum, uh, being able to just spam that, like, something comes in on Thunderbolt that potentially resists it, like Magnezone, I can still hit that thing with Volt Switch damage and go from there. So I just, I prefer having the dual momentum from Volt Switch and U-Turn in this case, just to guaranteed get some momentum against his team. Dazzling Gleam for the Dragonite mainly, because <laughs> Dragonite is a very big problem. And then also, I mean, Dazzling Gleam, if I decide that I want to stay in and, and throw off one of my stabs, then Dazzling Gleam is as good as I can hope for in that situation. And then HP Ground to maybe pick off a weakened Magnezone, take it out from the range that it is, that it, well, if I can get it low enough, then Magnezone can be knocked out by HP Ground. Shukaberry is because my team really doesn't have a good answer to Dragon Dance Dragonite. In fact, my Scarfer is actually outsped by Dragonite if he runs max speed. And then Raichu can be picked off by a plus one extreme speed. So basically, if he runs like literally the perfect Dragonite set, this could be a big problem. So I decided for Shukaberry on Tapu Koko so that I can guaranteed live in Earthquake and get a Dazzling Gleam or a Volt Switch off. Just because, I mean, even though even though Raichu can't outspeed, it needs the Electric Terrain to be able to do so. And this way I don't just have to sack my Tapu Koko to the Dragonite in order to get Electric Terrain up. I can stay in, go for a Volt Switch or Dazzling Gleam to pick off Dragonite if I want to, or if Dragonite is at too high a health, I can just Volt Switch into my Raichu and then be able to outspeed. Just a way to take a hit from Dragonite and still be able to take that thing out. And then also potentially maybe like an Earth Power from Nidoking, even though this is mainly for the Dragonite. The speed is to guaranteed outspeed Scarf Magnezone and also Scarf Abomasnow, because Abomasnow, like I said, is actually a big problem against my team. So being able to outspeed that and you turn off two hit KO it with U-turn after uh, rocks damage is very, very nice. So being able to outspeed that is great as well. And then also HP ground guaranteed to outspeed the Magnezone and hit that thing. And then of course you just have the maxed out special attack and throw the rest into HP to be a little bit bulkier. I tinkered with uh, putting all of it into attack so that my U-turn does more damage. It would actually two hit KO Obama Snow from full guaranteed without hazards. But hazards are such a priority for me this game that I am more than likely going to have hazards up in this matchup. And so the extra damage on Obama Snow isn't really needed so I can just go with the extra HP to have a little bit more bulk. Next up we do have a Ferrothorn with Akaberry, Gyro Ball, Leech Seed Spikes, and Bulldoze. This is part of the dual or of the hazard stack combo that I am going for. Uh, because his team, his only defogger is the Mandibuzz and maybe something well, I guess Dragonite technically gets defog, but you're not running defog on Dragonite. Let's just be real at this point. 
Uh, <laughs> against me, you're running a Sweeper Dragonite. You're not running Defog Dragonite. So Mandibuzz is the only real uh, is the only real Defogger, and I do have Coco and Raichu that can take advantage of that thing. So being able to just come in, pressure stuff with Leech Seed and Spikes is very very strong. Bulldoze is for the Magnezone. I thought about running Shed Shell, but Akaberry was just more overall useful. Because in the instance that he doesn't bring Magnezone, I mean, he definitely should, because Magnezone just has a great matchup against my team uh, in general, especially all of my special attackers in my flying and electric spam special attackers. Uh, Magnezone should definitely be brought. But Ferrothorn just being able to tank the HP fire, bulldoze, get that thing chipped, and then with the Spadef, unless he has specs, he cannot two hit KO me. If I go for like a Leech Seed. If I go for a Leech Seed turn 1, which is normally what I'm going to do when I'm in with my Ferrothorn, he cannot two-hit KO me with Magnezone's HP Fire. So I will be able to get off a Leech Seed and a Bulldoze or maybe a Spike or something to that effect. Just Ferrothorn, very, very annoying for his team. Just the Iron Barbs as well be good for Dragonite Force coverage on Dragonite or Force the Z-Move. Very, very strong right there. And... Yeah, just fairly straightforward. Gyro Ball is to chip down the Dragonite. Leech Seed is for recovery. Spikes is for residual damage. And Bulldoze is for the Magnezone. And also, if I need it to reduce speed on something else, like if it's a Scarf of Amazon or Scarf Nido King that I just want to just want to wear that thing, wear those things down a little bit and reduce their speed for easier revenging, the Spadef is enough to, I believe, avoid a... I think it's avoid the two-hit KO from Obama Snow. Yeah, it's avoid the two-hit KO from Obama Snow with Life Orb Blizzard after rocks and hail damage. So basically just Ferrothorn is a way of coming in on Obama Snow and being like, okay, let's see what type you are. And then whatever type you are, I can deal with you accordingly. That's really what Ferrothorn is in this situation. Then I threw the rest in defense just for a little bit extra um, HP, just for a little bit of extra bulk when it comes to taking Dragonite's hits, as Ferrothorn is, is probably one of the ones that Dragonite will try to set up on. Next up, we do have my dedicated Mega Lopunny answer, and that is a Rocky Helmet Necrozma with Photon Geyser, Knockoff Toxic, and Morning Sun. Just being able to, uh, just being able to come in on Mega Lopunny every single time, heal up, have Photon Geyser as a strong stab move that's able to one-shot Lop. It's able to hit Lycanroc super hard. It's able to one-shot Nido King even with no investment. Just something very, very strong for all of those guys. Knockoff is spammable against his team to get rid of items. Toxic, in addition, is spammable. Blah, 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 blah. Spammable. Blah, blah, blah. Spammable. Because the two things that are immune to Toxic are Needle King and the Magnezone, and neither of them really want to come in on Necrozma just because of the coverage it can have. And also Magnezone is pressured enough by my Raichu and my Coco to where it won't want to come in on Necrozma. And even if it does, I knock off that thing's potential Assault Vest, which would be very, very nice for chipping that thing down. Uh, Rocky Helmet just punishes Lop for going for the weak priority, whether that's Quick Attack, whether that's Fake Out, or even just something like Power Up Punch just punishes Lopunny for going for a single attack. And then, as for the investment, I started off with a little bit of mix with the Nemesis on defensive, but I realized that, you know what? I have two special defense mons with Ferrothorn and Swampert. I'm just going to make Necrozma full bulk through 24 into... 24 into the speed just to be able to... What was it? I think it was... Yeah, Necrozma will be able to outspeed an adamant V-created Victini. Uh, with this speed investment, then I just threw the rest into defense and HP so that I could take physical hits as well as possible. Next up, we do have the Swampert with Protect, Stealth Rock, Roar, and Earthquake with Rindo Berry and Damp, and then it's just basically full spit F to be able to take whatever, whatever hits he wants to go for. Then this is going to be my lead in the game. Just lead turn one, get up rocks, pressure his team, force him to react to me and then if he wants to try to switch around I am getting residual damage up the only way he has to prevent these rocks is either taunt or with magic coat and either way if magnezone's in I'm probably just going to take that opportunity to knock that thing out with an earthquake turn one if I can just because it's such a big threat to me but regardless uh protect stealth rock roar and earthquake protect is to force dragonite to waste its z move not be able to one hit knock out the pert and then have to go for something like Outrage in order to knock me out, which makes it a lot easier to revenge. 
with my Tapu Koko because, you know, the whole dragon immunity thing. Stealth Rock, of course, for Chip. And then Earthquake as the singular uh, attack. And I know he does have a couple mons that are immune to that. But I will just probably be roaring around quite a bit. This keeps Dragonite from being able to set up on me. If Mandibuzz wants to come in and try to roost up or defog on my Swampert, Roar will be able to send that thing out to where it has to take another round of rocks to come back in, etc., etc. And then, like I said, the Spideff is just enough is just max Spideff, basically. Just be able to take special hits as well as possible. And then you might notice the sassy nature and the speed. So this is to guaranteed under speed Trick Room Victini because one of the sets that actually Matty Brolic brought up when I was talking to him about this matchup was a Trick Room Weakness Policy Victini that could do a ton of damage to me. This is so I guaranteed under speed Victini at minus one in Trick Room and I'm able to take that thing out with Earthquake. Wow, I'm taking way too long. Uh, <laughs> let's go into the next one. Next one is Buzzwool. This Choice Scarf with Leech Life, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and Drain Punch. Just very good coverage against his team. The speed is to guaranteed outspeed Megalop, and I think it's even got a little bit extra to speed creep things that are speed creeping me, speed creeping Megalop. So just threw a little bit extra in there for that extra speed creep, maxed out the attack so that I'd be able to hit as hard as possible. And then the Spideff, just because, I mean, in a situation where it's like sub Magnezone or I need to take a blizzard in order to revenge kill a bomb snow that type of thing just be able to come in and take those hits a little bit better because i mean i still have plenty of hp plenty of defense to take physical hits special hits would be the problem against buzzwell so just investing that much can drastically change enough of the calcs to where it would be warranted and finally we do have a raichu with psyche mz protect psychic thunderbolt and volt switch you might be thinking wait why is there no focus blaster or grass knot because seismitoad is going to be rindo if it comes in i don't want to pop the rindo on the seismitoad with my raichu because he'll probably just knock me out with earthquake and i want to save my raichu so i will just be switching i'll be switching out of there regardless against seismitoad magnezone like i said assault vest could be a problem i could run hp ground but even then magnezone is bulky enough to where it doesn't like it needs a significant amount of chip volt switch just allows me to switch on out of there get some chip damage on the magnezone and then go into something more uh, applicable for the situation until Magnezone is in range of getting knocked out or is knocked out. So just a nice little tech right there to be able to get momentum while taking advantage of psychic of electric terrain. And also with Volt Switch, I'm able to Volt Switch out on the last turn of electric terrain, go into something else and not just have to leave Raichu in there forced to switch out. The speed is to guaranteed outspeed Needle King, even outside of electric terrain, which is a huge enough problem for my team that I want to be able to do that. And then just max special attack and then through the rest into HP. So yeah, that is the team. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and hope you guys will tune in on Wednesday. So thank you again. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.